A green energy future requires vast quantities of batteries to become a reality. By 2030, there are estimated to be 145 million electric cars on the road. And this means that we need to produce a lot of batteries. But it also means that we're going to have a lot of battery waste. By their very nature, batteries are difficult to recycle. So we are wasting crucial resources by making new ones. Scientists understand these problems and are hunting for solutions and have found a solution in something called supramolecular organoionic electrolytes. But will they actually solve the problem? Let's discuss it. A transformation of our world and society is underway. We are transitioning towards a so-called green future. Our electricity will come from renewable sources. Our cities will be covered in green buildings and higher density living will open up additional green spaces as we try to incorporate more nature into our lives. Even farming may transition from large fields to more efficient vertical models, which will reduce greenhouse emissions, food travel distances, and improve quality year round, which will also free up land for reforestation efforts. But we are far from this idealized dream. In fact, the future looks rather bleak right now. The globe is warming faster than we anticipated, and we haven't done nearly enough to transition away from fossil fuels. Science got us into this mess by inventing fossil fuel-based electricity, even if greed and self-interest made the mess a lot worse. And science can get us out of it. We have developed many alternative energy sources that don't require the burning of fuel. And even better, these methods are actually cheaper than traditional fossil fuel methods. But there is a major obstacle standing in the way of us having a green energy future. And I'm not talking about certain climate deniers who want to see the world burn. I'm talking about batteries. We need energy storage for renewable energy sources to work. There have been some creative solutions out there, molten salts, pumped hydro and gravity storage where some are significantly more useful than others. But for practical purposes, we need portable batteries. Cars can't operate with a thousand degree molten salts in the boot for energy storage. They need batteries, but batteries rely on rare minerals, can be inefficient and degrade over time. We need to solve some of these problems and scientists are working on all of these fronts. But what I wanna focus on here is the minerals that we're using. If we run out of these minerals, we are in a lot of trouble. If there is a shortage due to a supply disruption, we are in trouble. And if these minerals become so vitally important to the function of society, the chances of conflict will rise dramatically. To solve these problems, we need to treat batteries like we treat aluminium. Recycle it extremely efficiently. Around 75% of all aluminium produced is still being used today because it requires 95% less energy to recycle aluminium than it is to make new aluminium, which gives it an extremely good incentive to recycle it. Unfortunately, the opposite is true when it comes to batteries. Batteries seem simple enough. You have a positive cathode, a negative anode, and some electrolyte in between. But modern batteries are actually quite complex in their construction. In order to increase their capacity, battery designs have extremely tightly packed layers and every company has their own way of obtaining this. This dramatically complicates the recycling process as there is not a standard method of constructing these cells. To make matters worse, the battery cells are often held together with tough glues that make them difficult to take apart. An example is the batteries that are found in electric vehicles. Nissan's regular leaf battery model can take up to two hours to dismantle, while Tesla's cells are unique not just only for their cylindrical shape, but also for their almost indestructible polyurethane cement that holds them together. As a consequence, it can be cheaper to buy freshly mined metals than trying to recycle them. But this doesn't have to be this way. Gavin Harper, a University of Birmingham researcher who studies electric vehicle policy issues sees battery recycling as an opportunity, saying, on the one side, disposing of electric vehicle batteries is a waste management problem. And on the other side, 
it's an opportunity for producing a sustainable secondary stream of critical materials. Realising sustainable battery recycling means a complete overhaul on how we recycle batteries. Ideally, we would have some direct recycling process, but that is not what we have. Instead, we use two main methods, pyrometallurgy and hydrometallurgy. Pyrometallurgy is more common and it takes the burn it approach. Everything melts at different temperatures. By controllably heating the shredded contents of used batteries, we can separate the contents. It is not a perfect procedure because through the heating process, you can make compounds and can contaminate the material. But it is a useful technique, even if it is expensive and energy intensive. Hydrometallurgy involves submerging used battery material in pools of acid to produce a rich metallic soup. It can also be complicated to then extract the metals back out of the liquid. With the right materials, the method is possible and researchers are developing new techniques to make this extremely viable. But to be a consistent technique, battery manufacturers would need to adhere to strict guidelines on what material they use, which at the moment is not done. And currently, the chemicals used are quite dangerous. One solvent that recyclers use to dissolve cathode binders is so toxic that the European Union has introduced restrictions on its use. And the US Environmental Protection Agency deemed that it posed an unreasonable risk to workers. To avoid these issues, we need a direct recycling method. And researchers from the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in the United States may have just found a solution. They have developed a new type of electrolyte that promises to revolutionize battery recycling. They designed a supramolecular organoionic electrolyte. The important quality of this material is that it is solid at the normal operating temperatures between minus 45 and 45 degrees centigrade and it is liquid at 100 degrees centigrade. Why is this important? Well, it means that they can heat up the batteries and remove the melted electrolyte, and then remove the intact anode and cathode to be used again. To make new cells, they introduce the electrolyte as a solid powder into the lithium metal cells. They then raise the temperature of the cell up to 100 degrees for five minutes, followed by letting the cell cool back down to ambient temperatures, which then solidifies the electrolyte. The scientists demonstrated this by recycling a cathode, and they found that after recycling, the battery had 90% of its initial capacity before recycling, which is an amazing result for such a simple recycling process. But this is just the beginning. There are many more compounds that may be more efficient at the recycling process. Currently, it is far from optimized, we need technology like this to make batteries that have longer lifetimes and are cheaper to make. The cheaper the batteries are, the more viable green energy becomes. For a green energy future, we need to develop a lot of new technologies. Recently, certain types of solar panels demonstrate a thousand fold improvement in their efficiency. Check out this video to find out more about this work.